Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new TKL from a company called MChoose. Now, I had not heard of MChoose. It looks like they've been around for a while. And so I reached out to MChoose and asked if I could get a review unit um, to take a look at it. I had not heard of their brand before. Um, it was a very pleasant experience. Not that I've had unpleasant experience, but sometimes they're, they can be odd. Anyway, um, it was nice. Uh, they reached out. They sent me the keyboard. They actually asked me to wait for a certain date to release it. So I'm releasing it on that date. Um, but it is a gasket mounted three mode TKL. TKL being one of my favorite layouts still to this day. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've got love for all sizes, 40s, 60s, 75s, 65s. But TKL will remain that one size that in a pinch I can use without having to worry about, you know, though I do like to add layer options in my TKLs, um, I can get to work with it if it doesn't have layers. So TKL remains like the minimum size that I can work on, even if I don't have a numpad, um, I tend to carry a numpad with me. But anyway, I am very fond of TKLs. The, this is an aluminum TKL that is three mode and gas mounted. And so far, the little bit that I've seen about it, um, there's a lot of positive reviews. So being that TKLs are usually what end up as my daily driver, I'm, I'm hoping this is going to be one of those new ones. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have in the box. Taking a look at the MChoose GX87. So in the box, we have a user guide card. We have a user manual, both English and Chinese. We have a standard switch and keycap puller. We have a standard rubberized USB-C to USB-A cable. We also have a couple of extra switches. These seem to be a linear from KTD that have a very nice crisp bottom out and are just slightly long pull. I would guess probably 3.7. 3.8 millimeter total travel. And here we are with the MChoose GX87 TKL. And thankfully they do include a dust cover, something that I, in my opinion, will help your keyboard to last as long as it can, um, because it's gonna keep a lot of that detritus that's in the air out of the keyboard when not in use. It's a good way to protect your keyboard and make sure that your investment lasts. So here we are, uh, initial impressions, very clean. I like the lines. I like how the wedge is done on the side of the keyboard. It is a very nice classical type wedge. It has a pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz dongle back here, and it is on a magnet. And the 2.4 gigahertz dongle is branded. That way, if we drop it and we lose it, we know what keyboard it's, gonna, it's going to. We have a switch for both Bluetooth and 2.4 and our Type-C connector. Now, taking a look here, it looks like we do have some double-shot PDT keycaps, or at least that's my guess from how they feel. Let's see how thick these are. All right, these are coming in at 1.5 millimeters of thickness, which is a very good thickness for PDT keycaps, especially stock ones. I've, I know plenty of sets that you can buy that are 1.2. 1.3 so this is definitely good for a pre-built so as i said the switch i'm i'm really just not sure what model it is um their page isn't live yet as i'm prepping to film this before i release but it is a very nice crisp and snappy linear switch from ktt and uh it is slightly long pull I would guess about a 3.8, 3.7 millimeter for travel. And it does look like we have uh, these palm plate mounted stabilizers. Uh, these seem to be the newer ones, which they have been getting better and better. These are definitely lubricated. I would actually say perhaps a tad too lubricated. But when I come back to this, I will uh, probably clean these off and just re-lubricate them though I did not notice any ticking or any issues 
with these as they are. Now we do have a PC plate. There is dampening between the PC plate and the PCB. It feels like it's probably a pour on foam. And we do have a PET layer above the PCB with another layer that actually feels closer to a silicone rubber than it does an IXPP. So I'll have to take a look at that and confirm. Now I did not see any uh, places for uh, screw and stabilizer support. I don't believe this has that. So thankfully the plate mounted stabilizers are well attached and they don't cause any ticking or issue. The design of this keyboard, I, I just love. It's very nice and clean. I like how they have the pocket here. I love how they've done the wedge. But I really must say that I love this bottom weight. It's, it's like a metallic reptile skin, if that's the way that I would describe it. Because it's, it's almost like scaly. But... I don't know, it feels like, I know it's going to sound silly, but what I might imagine if dragons existed, what their skin might feel like, you know, just like something, because they breathe fire, so they have to be made of something that's got some sort of, you know, hybrid or composite metal into their skin. I don't know. I'm just, I really, really love that weight. That's, that's the first time I've seen something like that. And I really, really like it. So we have a really lovely TKL that comes pre-built. Very nice out of the box. Um, now, if we want to open it, do we need to break out the tools? No, because this is using one of the newer systems that I've seen. And I hope that more keyboard manufacturers adopt this because this is the only way to go. Need to get inside of the keyboard. Just lift up. This is the ball latch system. Basically, we've got these ball bearings inside of like a spring loaded column. And then you've got these slightly concave blocks right here. And they basically just lock into those ball bearing gaskets or there's ball bearings on springs and it holds it in place. It's enough pressure. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to guess it's a pretty strong spring that's holding that ball bearing in place um, or maybe even some sort of other mechanism. I don't know, but it's honestly, in my opinion, all aluminum keyboards should have this system because not having to worry about stripping screws, not having to worry about, you know, driving it in just slightly the wrong way, getting it stuck, not having to worry about, you know, losing screws, not having to worry about, oh, I need the exact toolkit to get into this keyboard because it uses X, Y, Z. No, you just pull the top off and here you are. Now, underneath the PCB, we do have another full PET layer, which in my opinion, I've seen has done more than this combination than stuffing a whole bunch of things down in here. I, I don't know what, why they work so well together, but seeing this PET backed, um, I'm guessing it's a, uh, it feels like it could be a silicone rubber. Yeah, it really does. Or it could be like a latex almost, but this is attached to the PCB though. It doesn't leave it's not leaving any um, residue behind. But you push it back down, it goes back onto the PCB. Now we do have two 4,000 milliamp hour batteries working in tandem. And we do have the daughter board card, which connects to the batteries as well as to the PCB using a ribbon cable. So, I mean, if you do did want to remove this, I would just recommend disconnecting the ribbon cable carefully, then pulling it off and then putting it back together. Let those tadpole gaskets go nice and easy into 
their spots and there's actually a square cutout as well as a round cutout in the middle for it to sit into. We can see that we have flex, but it's not crazy flex. We don't have that flex cut PCB or, um, or plate, but we are on gaskets. So we do have, this is, the, to me, this is the perfect amount of flex. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I can, I can type on the flex cut ones much better than I can on a standard like tray mount, but I prefer to have a little bit of stiffness. And this is just that perfect median now there is flex cuts along the top and the side here and that does kind of bring the function row down when you press it on here but not at that that much at all it's just enough and down there we can see that we have actually like a gasket part around it but that's where this diffuses right into it here we can also see where we have the cutouts for those tadpole gaskets. And that's why we don't need to do a force break mod on a two piece like this, because for all intents and purposes, though it is connected, the way that it's connected, it's connected through a ball bearing system, which kind of already handles any, any of that vibration. It's not gonna pass any of that vibration into the rest of the keyboard. It's gonna stay in those actual balls. Out yet, so you're not going to have to worry about there being a ring. Whereas, with the I mean, the QCron Q series, the Keychron Q series, are definitely a keyboard that I mean, I haven't bought the latest one, but I did have the V2, I believe, the Q1 V2 or V3, I can't recall the number, but even that, even though it had rubber, the way that it was built, it just you had to add force brake mod in order to get rid of this ping and granted they do come stock with steel plates which i just don't understand but that's neither here nor there with this ball latch system we don't have to worry about doing the force brake mod because the top case for all intents and purposes it's not floating on but it's not directly connected to or screwed into the bottom case they are connected through those ball cat systems and that's where that sound remains. So if there's any reverberation between the top and the bottom case, though, because of the way that it's locked into place, I don't think it allows for, for any movement whatsoever because those ball bearings literally just capture it so tightly. It's almost like it's become one singular piece. Now, that's another thing that they kind of allude to on their website. And based on the pricing that I'm seeing, it's going to be and depending on options between $99 and $115, I believe, which to me for the features that it offers is a steel. Um, I would have loved to see uh, some support for screw in stabilizers, but thankfully the stabilizers it does come with are, oh, wait a minute, that's why we can't do a playlist build. Uh, we can't do screw in stabilizers, so we can't do a playlist build. But the one thing that I they're kind of alluding to is that you'll be able to buy different colored tops. And I mean, to be able to just switch it out, um, you know, and have a two tone. I know I I love my two tone keyboards, especially, you know, with this, we're doing a black on white, um, having a black top with a white bottom and the black on white keycaps. It just kind of, you know, it'd be, well, it'd almost be like a, a ska keyboard at that point <laughs> well, with the dragon skin on the bottom though just the specs today we're taking a look at the mcho's gx87 the three mode aluminum ball catch tkl it incorporates a flex cut pc plate using a silicone leaf gasket spring system it has a three and five pin south facing hot swap pcb with no screw and stabilizer support it is available in several colors as well as with several switches. In this case, KTT Vintage White with double shot TBT Cherry keycaps in the black on white colorway. This keyboard weighs 2,072 grams fully loaded as is and is powered by two 4,000 milliamp hours or 8,000 milliamp hour capacity. 
capacity. This keyboard will MSRP for between $99 and $119, depending on options. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters, while the back sits at 36 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of nine degrees. Well, as of right now, I don't have all of the details. By the time I make this video live, it will be available. But it does list QMK and VIA, though on another page I saw it listed as using MCHO's hub software. So I can't really cover the software as of right now uh, because I don't have the full specs on it. And I wasn't just on a cursory search. I wasn't able to find any QMK source as of yet. I will reach out to them, though, and update when I come back to this keyboard because I definitely will. This is going on my desk. There's a lot of things that I like about this keyboard, not only how it sounds, how it feels. It does have a flex cut PCB. I didn't notice that, but um, it's just not as crazy flexy as some of the the cheaper keyboards are um, that, you know, you'll, you need to use something to keep the plate up while you put the switch in kind of thing. So since it, does, it doesn't have that type of flex, I mean, yes, I can push down on it and it definitely gives um, to me, it is just perfect. Hey, it's future me jumping in real quick. So I've gone ahead and made this my um, desktop, my daily driver. I'm really enjoying this keyboard. I did change out the keycaps. I still have the, the switches that it came with, but I changed out the keycaps for some MT3 Camillo um, Olivetti. I call them Olivetti because it reminds me of the Olivetti terminals. Um, but I'm absolutely loving this. And I wanted to cover because I didn't have all the information until now. Uh, from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, this is starting on Indiegogo at $59. There's 300 spots for this keyboard at $59. Now, that is the light version. There's three different versions for this keyboard. There's the MCHO's GX87 Lite, the MCHO's GX87 Max, and the MCHO's GX87 Ultra. Now, from what I can gather, they're all CNC aluminum. The surface finish on the light and the max is 150 mesh, while for the Ultra, it's 180 mesh. And I do believe that this one's the Ultra because it is loaded with the KTT vintage white switch. Um, the bottom nameplate is the stainless steel ice crystal, which is this one. They all have three mode, so they're all wireless, which is pretty cool because usually it starts out with no wireless. Um, they all, okay, light, the light and the max version have gas, gasket mounted hot swappable. The ultra is the one with the case that detaches with easy release. Other than the finish, the switches, the weight or the bottom nameplate, and the, um, the quick latch system that they have for this keyboard, those, seems, those seem to be the only differences between those three models. But again, I am actually looking at the, um, the Indiegogo page, which just launched. I'm going to try to get this out as soon as possible. But they have the Super Early Bird GX87 Lite. So it's three mode, it's everything else. It just doesn't have the, the same finish and the same weight, but three mode, everything else, $59. Only 11 of those 300 spots have been purchased. I am not one for Indiegogo or Kickstarter. What I've been told is that this will be in stock on their store, but it's going to be closer to 100 and up when it is in stock. So take that as you may. Um, I am not going to uh, get into a diatribe about business models, but I can definitely say that this is a good keyboard and it does appear to be something that they've already had manufactured. So it's not something that we're going to be waiting on. And MCHOS is a company that's been around for a while. Please stay tuned after the end of the review and the stock sound test. I'm going to go ahead and do a sound test loaded up with the MT3. Um, Camillo or Olivetti set just so that you can hear the difference but this this TKL is is lovely I love everything about it I've been enjoying it the only thing that I'm still 
waiting to hear about is about QMK and VIA. And as soon as I find that out, I will be sharing and updating either this video or creating a whole new video. So please stay tuned for the sound test after the stock sound test with the MT3 keycaps. I do hope that this really does bring in more. I mean, at this price, I mean, I remember when, you know, a plastic TKL would probably set you back about 20 bucks more and it'd be, you know, it wouldn't have half the features this has. And um, so to see this kind of keyboard at this price range is just, it's pretty awesome. But like I said, I definitely will be coming back to this keyboard uh, as I want to, to do some things to it. Uh, I really, I like how it sounds stock. I definitely want to try some tactile switches in there since, you know, I am a tactile guy. Though these uh, uh, KTT vintage white switches are really nice. They're um, kind of like a deeper version of the KTT Kang white, um, though they are lubed. There's no pain whatsoever. Um, but the feel of this keyboard, the look of this keyboard, 8,000 milliamp hours, uh, the way that it's mounted, um, the gasket system price, TKL. I think for a lot of people, a TKL is a much more comfortable layout to go to from, you know, after having worked, you know, perhaps their entire life with only full size um, because it's still a familiar layout, but, you know, you get the space. You can still add a macro pad should you want it, but you've got the keys that you're going to need. I mean, the only keys, I mean, you, you, the macro pads only replacing or the numpad is only, you know, putting in a calculator format, you know, the, the number keys. So it's, you have everything that you need. I mean, obviously if you're going to be inputting a lot of numbers, uh, I definitely recommend adding a macro pad like I do if I use anything smaller, a TKL or smaller. But I'm definitely going to use this as my daily, and then I'll come back to it. Sometimes I, it's like, I want to come back to it, but I'm using the keyboard, so it's like, oh. <laughs> because coming back to it means it's going to be out of you know commission anyway uh, while it's being filmed for at least a couple of days. Anyway, um, I think that, I'll definitely do a follow-up once I have some more information. I'll go over the QMK and buy it if it does have that. Uh, because it kind of looked like it had software for customizing the RGB, like closed source, but it also had QMK and buy it. So I'm kind of curious how that is, if, they're, if they can actually like piggyback another firmware on there, or piggyback QMK on their, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know, or, or maybe it's more like the Mons Geek situation where you have an international one and a Chinese version one, and that one uses the hub and the international uses the QMK bio. I will do an update on this because I think this is, I mean, it's a great keyboard. So today I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a sound test, a stock sound test of the MCHO's GX87, uh, the TKL that I think is going to... Uh, it may just be the TKL of the year. I know we're only, you know, we're barely halfway through, but I mean, this is just, when you think about all the features and the price, it's just a chef's kiss. Anyway, yes, I do have a propensity for TKL keyboards. <laughs> I, I love TKL layouts. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test using, just using the KTT Vintage White and these Double Shot Cherry uh, Black on White PBT keycaps. Um, if you do like the video, thumbs up, subscribe, it really does go a long way. I want to wish everyone an awesome day, and until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.